Hello and welcome to a video part two on congruent triangles. In this video we're going to use what we've learned about congruent triangles to find missing sides and angles. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here for this first problem, um, number four. All right, so we have a statement that says what corresponds with what. So from this statement we know, and I'm going to mark, that angle S is congruent to angle B. So those two are congruent. So that tells me about the measure of angle B. Since they're both congruent, and I know that angle S is 67 degrees, I know that angle B is 67 degrees. Okay, let's keep going. We also know that angle T is congruent to angle F. So let's mark those congruent. Angle T, I'll give the two marks, congruent to angle F. Well, that didn't give me any new information yet. And we know that angle W, the last one, so I'll give this three marks, is congruent to angle N. So the right there, angle N, one, two, three marks, that tells me that something that tells me that angle W is also 82 degrees. Okay, now I can actually find the third angle, which is angle T, which is congruent to angle F. I can use either one of these triangles, and they have the same angles because they're congruent, and I can use either one to find the measure of that third angle F on one triangle, which is T on the other. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's, knowing that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180, let's just take this first triangle, add 82 and 67, and we get 149, and we subtract 149 from 180, and we get 31. So that's 31, and this being congruent to it is also 31. And now that's just the angle. So what do we know about the sides? Well, let's mark the sides that are congruent um, based on the statement also. So we know that segment ST is congruent to segment BF because they're in the first position. So ST, I'll give that one mark right here, is congruent to BF right here. So that tells me that since ST is 17 centimeters, so is BF, 17 centimeters. All right, we can do the same thing with the other segments. So we know that at, uh, TW is congruent to BF. So I'm going to choose TW right here to have two marks, one, two, and that's congruent TW with FN. So FN also gets two marks, and there we get another side, because now I know that FN is also 14. So this is 14 centimeters. And last, I know that S... W is congruent to BN, the first and the third. So SW, I'm going to give that one, two, three marks, and BN also gets one, two, three marks. And since, since WS is nine centimeters, so is this one over here. All right, now we've got all the pieces labeled and we can fill in the answers on the answer sheet. All right, so segment BN has a length of nine, nine centimeters. Segment TW has a length of 14. I'm just looking over at the triangles. So 14 centimeters. Segment BF, segment BF is here, has a length of 17 centimeters. The measure of angle W over here is 82 degrees. The measure of angle B is 67 degrees. And the measure of angle F is 31 degrees. Okay, let's try the second example. So I'm going to pause the video. I'll write in all, the, all of them and we can compare answers. Okay, so just going by the, the triangle congruence, I marked everything congruent. Now notice that these angles, G and J, well let's look, notice the sides first, that GH and JH are the same. So I started out by marking the base angles of that isosceles triangle as equal because that's their isosceles. All right, so then I didn't have to have a different angle for Z and X. They're both the same as G and J. And the same thing for the sides. There's only um, those two sides are, they're all, all the sides that are unnamed there. The longer ones are 27 feet. The only thing that we haven't found yet is the, the missing angles, those four missing angles. So remember how we do that. We know, let's just look at the triangle, it doesn't matter which one, but we have, um, if we call this x, then we know that, well, we don't have to, we don't have to use algebra, we can just um, 
use the fact that 180 minus 38 gives us 142, and then the, the base angles are each half of 142, so that's 71 degrees. Okay, so each one of these angles, 71, 71, and these are equal, so they're all 71s. All right, and we just put them into the spaces. So GJ is 18 feet. XY, XY is uh, here, so that's 27 feet. And ZY is here, also 27 feet. Angle H up here is 38 degrees. Angle Z is here, 71 degrees. And angle J is also 71 degrees. All right, let's look at the next example. Okay, so we're given two triangles that are congruent. We're looking for the values of X, Y, and Z. So we need to figure out here what, where are we going to get our equation? So our equation has to come from equal sides. So before I write the equation, I'm going to label the triangles congruent lengths based on the statement. So I know that UV, UV here, is congruent to TS. So I'm going to give them each just one mark. So that right there is enough for me to be able to find X, right? Because those two are equal. I also know that UW... UW, I'm going to make that two marks, so UW is here, and that's congruent to, the, the UW is the first and the third, so that's congruent to TR, right? So TR also gets two marks, so right there is two marks. And hopefully the last one will work, but let me just show you in red here. So these two correspond, and so U, or sorry, VW, I'm going to give three marks, VW gets three marks, and so does SR. And yes, they do correspond. So now we're ready to write three equations to find X, Y, and Z. All right, so the X's are based on the one tick mark. So I can say that 12X minus 7 equals 53. The Y's are based on three tick marks. So I can say that 5Y minus 33 is equal to 57. And the Z's are based on the two tick marks here. I can say that 3Z plus 14 is equal to 50. All right. And we just have to solve each one of those and get X, Y, and Z. So here we're going to add 7 to both sides. And we get uh, 12X equals 60. So X is 5. Here, we'll add 33 to both sides, so 5y is equal to 90, and y is equal to 18. And here, we'll subtract 14 from both sides, and I have a little typo there because 3z plus 14 two tick marks is equal to 50, and I have 15. So I think I listened to myself instead of um, looking. So this is 50, 5, 0. And I'm subtracting 14 from 50, and that makes a little bit more sense. So 3z equals 36, which means that z is 12. Okay? Let's look at the next example. All right, so here we have two triangles that are congruent. And we're looking for X, Y, and Z again. So we need to first recognize that. Let's, let's mark the congruent angles here according to the statement. So P is congruent to C. P is congruent to C over here. So from that, I can say that 4Z minus 32 equals 36. Okay, that's one down. Let's go to the next one. So we have H is congruent to N. So H gets two marks. N also gets two marks. So I can say that 6X minus 29 is equal to 115. 
Okay. And for the last one, oh, and by the way, um, I can put that 115 in here. So that's going to help me get angle S, which I'm going to need for the next part, because I know for the next part, angle S is congruent to angle F. Let's give those each three marks, one, two, three. But let's also now find angle S based on that first triangle on the left. So I know that 36 and 115 adds up to 151, oops, 151, and then 180 minus 151 is 29. So this is 29, and so is this 29. And so now, now I know for y, I don't have an equation yet for y, but I know that 3y minus 1 equals 29. And then we'll just solve those three equations. Okay, so we have x is 26, y is 10, and z is 17. All right, let's look at our next example. Now, this is pretty much the same idea, only this time we don't have a picture. We just have a statement. So we're going to look at this. Now, notice that all of the information given um, is all about lengths. So I'm going to write down my three length equations without variables, just focusing on this so I can kind of think of one thing at a time. All right, so I know that DE... DE is the first two, and that equals to JK. I know that EF, that's the second two, EF is equal to KL. And I know that DF is equal to JL. Now I'm going to write an equation for each one of those just based on what I see here. So I'm going to look for DE, and I'm going to underline it in blue. Here's DE, and I'm going to look for JK and underline that in blue. Let's see, JK, there it is, all the way over there. All right, so that's one equation. So I know that 3y minus 21 is equal to 18. All right, let's try the same thing now in red. I'm going to look for EF and underline it in red. There it is, EF. And I'm going to look for KL. KL is not here. I don't see KL. So I guess EF just doesn't have, it's not part of an equation. Let's just keep going. I'm going to underline DF and JL in red, I mean in green. So we'll choose green for this one. So DF is here and JL is here. So that's my second equation. So I'm able to say 9X minus 23 is equal to 7X minus 11. Okay, let's solve both of those equations for x and y. Okay, x equals 6, y equals 13. All right, now let's take a look at these two triangles. And for this one, we have a combination of sides and angles. So let's go ahead and write down everything we know from this statement. Okay, so those are our six congruences, but we also, looking at the information here, what I want you to notice is that what we have right here is we have two of the three angles. So that means, and we're going to need this to solve this problem, we need to find the third angle. So the two angles that were given, 84 and 32, 32 and 84 add up to 116. And that means that the third angle, 180 minus 116, is 70, so that would be 64 that would have to be the other angle. So that means that we just found that the measure of angle, let's see, it's Q, R, and S, so the measure of angle Q must be 64 degrees. All right, so, so we're going to use that along with this and along with this statement right here to, to write our first equation, and this is going to be the one to solve for Y. So our first equation would be that since we know that Q and M are the same, we know that Q is 64 and M is 17 minus 4Y. We have, I mean, 17Y minus 4. We know that 17Y minus 4 equals 64. The other thing that we're going to use based on the other information that we have is we have this QS and MP, and we have those QS and MP are in a statement. So we can write that equation for our next one, that mainly that these two are equal. So 2X plus 1 equals 15. And then solve those two. And there's the answers. x equals 7, y equals 4. Hope you found this helpful.